Right, I thought I'd have a bit of an amalgamation video this time because there are so many little subjects that I was going to have a chat about um, that it's not really worth making a little tiny standalone three minute video for. So what we're going to cover in this video is um, solar panel, a little quick tip thing that I've got about solar panels. Uh, we're going to talk about um, heater ducting and how you can help um, essentially make them more economical or make them more efficient. Um, we're going to talk about uh, my toilet, um, the size that I came up with and how I came up with that size, and a little bit of an update on what's going on with the whole traveling um, with two vans and um, travel videos and that kind of stuff. So bear with me, this might be a bit longer than usual video. Right, so first I want to talk about solar panels. A um, couple tiny little things anyway, um, about efficiency um, and cleaning, uh, that kind of stuff of solar panels. I have fitted some tiny little plastic brackets, um, you might call them drains or whatever, um, to the edge, the corners of my solar panels and Mandy's solar panels. Um, and I did that as soon as we installed them. So they've been up there for months and months and months. Um, and a few weeks back when we were with Daz and John and Tash and I, I went up on the roof and checked my solar panels against their solar panels to see if these little brackets worked at all. And yes, they do. Now, bear in mind, process of cleaning solar panels, most of the time is just the fact that it rains. So um, as long as it rains enough, um, it gets washed off and clean solar panel. These little brackets, corner brackets, whatever, clips, then help the corners drain off because normally the water collects in the corner so that you then normally get like a nasty brown or green patch where all the water essentially just clogs up and all the crap and everything stores in there. And yeah, that's not going to help your solar panel efficiency because it means part of your solar panel is then covered or it's not working the same um, because it's not getting the same sunlight as the rest of the panel so it can decrease the efficiency of your solar panel not to mention the fact that the crud on there and everything else could potentially um, you know cause an issue further down the line with your solar panel uh, more quickly than a panel that cleans the water off from the edge so you're not going to get that water ingress all the time so the tiny little clips um, are on Amazon. You, know, you choose your depth of your frame um, and then they come in a big pack. Like I say, my frame and Mandy's frames, even though the panels are different sizes with the same, I think it's like 30 mil or something, I can't remember. Um, obviously I'll put a link in the video description down below to them. Uh, and I've literally just put them on the corners um, of all of our solar panels and they work really well. So that was just a, a bit of a hint and tip, hints and tips or whatever about that. Just to let you know that obviously, um, if like me, you just try not to get up there and mess around with your solar panel as much as you can, um, and you're just happy to let the rain do it, then obviously the rain will um, wash away all the rubbish up there. Um, and then these little clips will allow the rainwater to drain off on the edge and they work really well. Um, and another little thing to talk about cleaning solar panels, a lot of people say, what do you clean your solar panels with? And I have tried over many years and many different types of solar panels using all sorts of different things, including like Rain Wizard and wax and all that kind of stuff um, to try and stop the rain collecting as much or things. None of that works. Honestly, it's, a, it's all complete waste of time. Um, if it rains, get up there and clean them now and again. Um, if it doesn't rain and gets dusty, you'll need to clean them more frequently. Um, and I just use a spray bottle of water. There's nothing else in there. It's just water. There's nothing, no other solutions or anything like that. It's just pure water in there, straight from the tap, fill it up, spray it over the panel, and then just use um, a microfiber cloth like these. Um, and I simply then just clean it off, dry it off all in one go. So there's no residue left over. Um, and I probably do that once a month-ish. Um, sometimes, you know, if we're more dry climate, where have we been, like sand or, you know, parked under trees and things like that, then I'll do it as we leave the area, especially trees. If it rains when you're parked under trees in summer, well, there's all sorts of tree sap and leaves and everything else 
so you want to get up there and clean that as quick as you possibly can but yeah clean your solar panel with water and, uh, and a cloth it's the easiest way uh, don't bother putting any other detergents on there at all um, essentially the top of a solar panel a framed solar panel anyway is just glass um, so just like glass of any window or anything like that you don't need to polish it you don't need to do anything else on there um, you just want to let it go and that's it uh, speaking of polishing um, the polish did bead the water just like if you polish your vehicle you'll get water beads on it um, and I noticed a bit of a drop in um, solar power from that almost like it was concentrating um, the power in certain areas where the little water droplet was and not in the other areas so what you really want is a solar panel that's uniform in its cleanliness or the amount of water on it or whatever so it all works that much better that's what has worked for me over the years anyway because I'm a bit of a nerd and I do look at these things so yeah right the next one I'm going to talk about is equally as dull and boring um, but that is your air ducts so for your diesel heater or Truma hot water system um, hot air system or whatever or maybe you've got the JP version of the Truma system or whatever um, if you have the 60 mil or 70 mil or whatever ducts going around your van for hot air blown hot air um, then wrap them in the same sort of insulation the bubble wrap insulation that you've used for your van um, yeah so I have just wrapped a couple of times round um, the bubble wrap silver um, foil insulation um, around all my pipes including all the connectors and everything else um, and not only do you then get less heat dispersion where the pipes run which is it's all right having heat where the pipes run I get why people do that because it's kind of like a radiator all the way around your van but sometimes you don't want all that amount of intense heat there you want the heat really being put out of the vent so by wrapping it with the insulation you do get a little bit of heat still so say for example you know it could be under your bed or under some cupboards where clothes are stored or anything like that um, then obviously bear in mind that that is going to keep that area warm so if it's through um, an area where your batteries are or your water tanks are or anything like that that's going to really help um, obviously if it's anywhere near food is you maybe want to put a few extra wraps of that stuff around it because really you don't want any heat where your food is um, but yeah that helped when I wrapped the heater pipes on my van um, from the um, motorhome we used to have and this one so it just goes through the pipe instead and out of the nozzle and that made it far more efficient and moving on to the toilet the poo palace um, I got quite a few questions about how I decided to go for the the layout so the size of it uh, dimensions all that kind of stuff and where I was having bits and bobs um, and ultimately like I've said throughout this process um, I've had caravans um, motorhomes and camper vans now um, spanning maybe almost 30 years um, certainly sort of like 25 years um, and that's given me an idea of of how much space you need for certain things rather than being a compromise uh, sometimes you need actual space and although you don't spend a lot of time in a toilet when you're in there you still need space to do those things that you do in a toilet now I'm a big guy so that's a consideration I had to kind of take into it um, and I knew from the last motorhome that there wasn't enough space in that toilet for me and the previous camper van that there perhaps still wasn't enough space in the toilet for me so what I did was get the internal dimensions of them just off the internet or asking people that have got them just say could you just measure the inside of your toilet cubicle for me and tell me what it is um, uh, so I got the, the the width if you like for the internal dimensions that way um, and then the other kind of like um, inspiration I guess was Bumble so Mandy's old um, auto sleeper I think it was auto sleeper symbol um, which is um, not the not the new shape vans we've got now it's the older shape van of that um, and I noticed when I was sat on that that it was possibly a little bit too narrow for me um, but the depth was fine so I could sit down there do whatever I wanted to do um, and if I ultimately ever did want to put a shower cubicle in there um, 
there's space in the floor to stand and move around. In fact, I use it to get dressed. So if I'm not quite want to close all the blinds all the time, like, you know, I've been out on the bike, want to come back um, and I want to get dressed um, or changed out of sweaty clothes and dry clothes. I don't want to shut all my blinds. Um, I'll just get dressed in my poo palace toilet and um, because it's got that much space inside. Um, so whilst I don't think I will ever put a shower in there, I don't ever know when I might sell this and the next owner might want to put a shower in there. So it's got room for you to have, you know, the space to get changed or shower. Um, and that's how I've come about a lot of the options in this van is um, personal experience, what I felt works well, comfort wise, um, and also at the end of the day, I know nothing ever lasts forever. Everything is temporary. Ultimately it means that my van has been built in a way that um, it serves my needs right now, but it's also generic enough that it should serve the needs of other people in the future that might want to buy my van. When it's up for sale, when, whenever that might be. Just to quantify that. I know a few people have offered me silly money for it already, uh, but it isn't for sale, so done and dusted. Um, I have spent enough time building this van, helping Mandy build her van, uh, to not want to build another van for some years to come. What I've really done here is create that space to get changed in or to fit a shower tray in or whatever, um, or just to be able to comfortably sit on the toilet and have that space to do you, your business on the loo. Um, and that's the way I've designed it. So I've obviously got a measurement that goes and gives me that depth. Um, and then I've measured the toilet height and the depth. And that then gave me the space from there. So I know that I needed like 45 centimeters um, for my space. I've lost a tiny little bit on the door, but obviously as the door opens, you, uh, you get that space back anyway. Um, but I find that quite a comfortable space to get changed in. Um, certainly if I had a shower tray in there, I could wash myself down and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it works out really well in all fairness. And the other question about traveling in two vans and how's that going? Well, it's going really well to the point of saying, well, it's kind of a, a mute subject right now. Um, we have had no issues. We have a radio to communicate with each other whilst we're on the road. So that's all right. You can have chit chats or, you know, tell each other important information. Um, Getting to your destination, we both have sat nav, so we both know where we're heading to. So if we get split up in traffic, then that's not an issue. We we both know where we're going. And so far, park ups, I mean, well, France is bloody brilliant, but even in the UK, as long as you're cautious about where you're going, and I use Google Maps and Google Earth and Street View to make sure that where I'm going, um, I've had a proper look around, so I know where it's like. I hopefully know, even if it's on a slant or anything like that. Um, and I've also got uh, usually a couple, at least two or three um, park up options when I go somewhere as well. So, yeah, how's it going? Touring in two vans. No more of an effort than it was in one big van anyway, that's for sure. Right, well, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, please let me know in the video description down below if you've got any questions or comments. Um, the next video I'm going to do is going to be talking about um, travel videos because... Um, it looks like we're no longer going to put the travel videos on the joint channel. We're going to do it um, on our own channels from our own perspective. It looks like that's the best way. But the next video is going to explain that in a little bit more detail because this video is probably going on for like 15 minutes now. So that's more than enough. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week, folks. Bye.